All right, hey everybody. Uh, my name is Jamie. We're going to continue on with part seven. So in this tutorial, we're going to try to set up our entity class and um, maybe uh, a few other classes to get the character to uh, to move in a bit more um, uh, a bit better way than this. Obviously, we don't want to continue to put the code where it currently is in the uh, game state class we want to have all of this code specific to the entity in its own class so before I do that one thing that I want to do um, which was brought to my attention in a reddit post is every time that I actually use this prototype um, I thought that it would be nice to have it to get it outside of uh, this this uh, object that we pass into the extend but it may actually look nicer and be a bit more organized and easier to see and understand if we do it um, the way that the uh, class library was um, built to do. So um, what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do all of them on here with you, I'm going to pause the video and finish the files up um, myself and then you can do it while, um, as well. But all we're going to do is take any function that's a dot prototype and we're going to remove it from uh, outside of here and throw it into the extend um, the extend function it where we pass in the object so how it would work is it's actually going to be just like the init function only we're going to we're going to uh, throw it in underneath with you know so it'll be init then the function that it's going to be set to then uh, a comma and then get title in this case with a colon and then the function that we're uh, passing through so this is actually allows for us uh, to easily add um, prototype functions uh, as part of uh, the object that we pass in so this is the exact same thing as what we had going on down here we can even throw in the comment that won't make a difference we can throw in the comment here but we're just going to put these all inside of the extend uh, the extend object so again we're taking off the prototype part and replacing the equals with a colon like so so I'll do that with this file and then what I'll do is I'll pause the video finish up all the other files and uh, in this way what we're going to have is a bit a bit cleaner look to our code so again just throw it in there after a comma replace the equals with the colon and make sure not to have a semicolon to close it because we are inside of a object setting properties so we do not need the semicolon inside the object so when we're all when it's all said and done we should have classes that look more like this and it's a lot easier to understand we've got private functions outside of the class definition and we have um, we have all the other ones that are relative to the class within the object that we're passing make sure to put commas between the functions um, and the uh, the name the property name now the code should run exactly the same we won't have any problems but this is what uh, what this would look like so one thing I do want to let you know is we are with the canvas rendering 2d prototype it's a bit different because we're actually adding a function to a native part of Java uh, JavaScript so therefore we aren't putting that inside of a class declaration we don't need to um, put that in there we'll leave this prototype out but I think at this point that's the only prototype that we need to leave uh, outside of here so now as you can see we've just got a much nicer smaller even less less stuff to to look at you know less lines and everything and we get the exact same result these are still accessible um, and they're still prototypes but this is just kind of the way that that class library was built to be ran so um, uh, again just set up the rest of the classes like this and uh, it's very self-explanatory you know this one right here we don't even have any prototypes so we don't have to worry about it um, image loader the same thing our sprite sheet we do have a crop we can throw crop right in here right after our um, right after our constructor so 
after this one I'm going to pause the video and uh, and continue doing this make sure to remove semicolons and the last one obviously doesn't need a comma um, and we can remove this so you can kinda see the benefit of doing it this way um, the code just looks a little bit cleaner as well alright and that should that should be uh, that should be it I will see you when I in just a second when I'm done doing this I just want to make sure uh, before I start make sure you are using colons because we're in an object and we are defining properties and setting them to functions and and things like that so make sure you use a colon not an equal sign alright see ya alright so now that this is done um, you can see all of my classes do not have uh, prototype functions aside from the display which has a um, prototype for a native function so all of our classes should look a lot prettier actually and um, it should run exactly the same so I've got this reran and our character should move around just the same so now that that's done let's start working on the entity class so let's go on over to our uh, web storm and right click on classes create a new directory or package in this case and it'll be called entities all right inside of entities we are going to create our base entity class so we will go to JavaScript create a new JavaScript file called entity like so and of course we will um, I've got this going to Git right now so that was what that pop-up was was just asking if I wanted to add it to the Git repository um, so we will define and require class and I believe that's it for now create the function pass class and come in here say var entity is equal to class dot extend and we have our constructor we're gonna pass in a handler an X a Y a width and a height all right so one thing that this is going to have as well we're going to have a tick passing in DT um act yeah DT and a render passing in G and we're gonna have some getters as well so uh, we'll say getters and this one will be uh, get X that will be a function and that will return this dot X so um, the getters are going to be returning values that are part of the object so I'm gonna come back up into the, or the class I'm gonna come back up to uh, the constructor and say this dot X is equal to underscore X this dot Y is equal to underscore Y and just continue doing this with all of the past in properties all right and we will continue on down here get y
next one is set x so we will say setters here and set x is equal to function oops we don't say equal we have colons we're inside of the object here and we're going to pass in a x and say this dot x is equal to x so we're setting these and stuff and later on if we want we can sanitize our uh, uh, our inputs so that we make sure that if they input something uh, it fits the correct requirements and that's why we have getters and setters anyways um, we you know we set a variable we can actually take the input and make sure it's correct and in you know force an error if if it's not what we're looking for things like that but at this point we're just going to take in uh, the value and set it set y function y all right and it will be this dot oops this dot y is equal to underscore y make sure to put commas between your uh, your methods um, and then from here let's add a couple more getters I forgot about we'll say get width function that returns return this dot width and get height function return this dot height so there we are with this so if you look at this I mean um, we need to do the set but if you look at the way that this is looking with the prototype functions being just put in the object that's being passed it just makes everything look a little nicer and cleaner and a lot less typing uh, so this dot height is equal to height so again setters need to be passed in and dot width there we go that was nice I didn't expect it to uh, highlight that code because I didn't have the correct thing there I don't know if that was it but that would that's pretty awesome it saw that I had this dot height there all right so we've got getters up here setters right here let's space the code just a bit I can see that I did open close parentheses and instead of open close bracket there uh, curly bracket so this right here should be the base of our class uh, and we'll come back in here and add a few things once we start dealing with collisions and stuff but for right now this will be fine and this should work great except we have class there that was definitely something we need to have correct now the final thing that we can do is come down to the very bottom here and so that we have access to the entity we will we will return it and that should be the entity class done for now all right now we will come into entity create a new package or directory called creatures and inside of here we'll create a new JavaScript file called creature with a capital C creature now this class is going to extend it's going to extend the entity class so that means we will define and include the entity class passing an entity like so now we have access to that entity class we've created alright so in here I'm going to create a few things I'm gonna say default default 
speed is going to be equal to 250. So that'll be 250 pixels per second that the um, that the character or the creature will travel. We'll create a few more defaults here. So we don't need to say var every time. We'll just do a comment here. And we'll say default health is equal to 10. Default creature width is equal to 64. Now these numbers can change. Default creature height is equal to 64. All right, so these are some default variables um, or values that we can refer to in our code. Now, one thing that we'll do um, to make these static is we'll actually concatenate them or, or um, create the static version of it. I like to set them up here first just because of the way that JavaScript works. I set them up here first so we have complete access to them inside of our creature class. But then I'll create a static version that's set to this, uh, you know, set to default speed and all that, so that we can access them outside of the entity class. Um, and you'll see how we do that later. So normally you can just define it as a static variable that you have access to. Uh, but here I like to put it like this. Now, I would say we'll just leave it like that. Um, there may be other ways to do it where I could just set it as static and refer to it as creature that default underscore width and such uh, inside of here. But I prefer to just use uh, this like I'm doing now. So var, there'll be some more things. So I will create uh, creature variables. Oops. Creature variables. We'll have a speed a health, an X move, and a Y move. All right, so now that we've got our variables set up and ready to use, let's create our class. So we'll say var creature is equal to an entity dot extend, passing in our constructor, which will take a handler, an X, a Y, a width, and a height just like the constructor of our entity class and because of that we will call the underscore underscore super passing in our handler oops handler x y width and height so that means we're calling the constructor of the entity class um, before doing anything else. Now we will set health um, in the, and actually you know what I'm going to remove these like so those are actually going to be I'm going to make them uh, part of the uh, part of the uh, what is instance so removing them from the top we we actually thought that would make it a private variable that uh, every creature will actually be changing and we don't want that so we actually want just say this dot health is equal to default health and the same thing can go with speed and set that equal to default speed and this dot x move is equal to we'll say zero and this dot y move is equal to zero so I pulled it out of here because these values up here if they're not part of the instance with the this um, prior to the variable name um, what it does is it makes it kind of like a universal any entity or, or sorry, any creature that if we change it in the creature class so like if an instance changes it then that's actually changing it for every creature so that um, when they refer to the outermost scope of the, the variables like speed we're actually going to be 
using the same value for every creature. And we don't want that. We want individual creatures to have individual um, health, speeds, X and Y move. Okay, so that's why we're putting it in here because we want something that's specific to each instance. If we want something that is not specific to each instance but just specific to the class, we can throw it out here and then have uh, functions like getters and setters so that we can grab that um, or even reference it within here such as this. We do want to refer to the default health that we set here. In every instance we'll grab the same value. Um, and we can change that later on with getters and setters. So moving on here, um, we're going to start putting our, our prototype functions in. So the first thing to do is underneath the constructor, we will say move x and set that equal to a function. That just says this. Oh, sorry. We'll not say move x. We'll say move. So it'll be move, and it's set to this dot move x and this dot move y. So this function will be called to make the character move, and subsequently we'll call our move x and move y. So we will then create those. So move x is a function. And that will just say this dot x plus equals this dot x move. So it will increment the x position by the x move. Now later on we'll come in here and change these quite a bit. Then we'll just do move y is equal to function and say this dot y plus equals this dot y move. All right, so we've got some functions here that are going to hopefully help the character uh, move around. And let's see, we will start doing our getters and setters now. So under here, we'll write getters and we'll put get, uh, get health. return this dot health and we'll do the same thing with uh, a few more get health and we'll have get speed so we don't have to do anything with any other variables like the X and Y and all that because we have it in our base class so we don't have to add those we're just going to have getters and setters for specific uh, properties that we've created for a creature so we will get the speed and now we will actually set health And we'll do the same thing for speed. And we'll say setters here. All right. So we will remove the final comma because we don't need that. And underneath all of this, right before the close of our definition, we will say return creature. So this should be our creature class for now. It's not really going to do anything uh, because we need to create the final uh, form, which would be like the player class. So. creature all right so that should be fine I don't know why it is having an error here we'll assume that it's right though oh we have two set health set speed there we go 
All right, now I will come to Creatures class and add a new class in here, create a new JavaScript file called player. And in here, we're going to do some stuff and actually get some movements and things like that. So I will define our class, define, and it's going to take in creature. And we know it'll take in assets because we need to be able to access uh, the asset that we're using. And then we'll have a function passing in or grabbing the creature and the assets that we get from it. So, all right, now we will have um, bar player and it'll be equal to oh and it's gonna be capital player it'll be equal to creature dot extend and we'll have a initialize or constructor and it's also going to take in a handler a x a width oops an x a y a width and a height Oops. In here, we'll run the super method so that we can call the super of the or the constructor of the uh, creature class, and pass in the things that we will be grabbing. So the x, the y, the width, and the height. But one thing that it's saying, uh, one thing that we could do is we could pass in the default creature width and height here um, or uh, into the super or we could actually pass in the width and height that we're grabbing from the constructor uh, I will I'll have to think about that um, so what I'm going to do is with a new player for now we're not going to pass in anything uh, for the width and height we're just going to create a player with a X and a Y and we'll define the players uh, width by using the defaults for the creature class which we didn't actually create so if we want to first do this um, like I was talking about before we will grab these variables up here I'm gonna copy them and I'm going to come down to the bottom right before we return the creature and we're going to say creature dot default speed and it will be equal to oops it'll be equal to default speed so what we're basically doing is setting the static version of it um, so that we can have reference to it in other classes oops and I'll just preemptively throw the semicolons in here there we go creature dot Creature dot and set these equal to what they are. So default default health default creature width and default creature height there so what this does is this basically creates some static properties that we can refer to in any class that includes the creature class so we'll say static uh, variables so now in our player class um, we can actually just say creature dot default width 
and creature dot default height. So now what that just means is our player is going to take on the default attributes of a creature's width and height. Um, now we can say, uh, now we can create the asset for the player. So I'll just say uh, this dot assets. We'll set it equal to assets dot get assets, and we'll grab. Um, I believe we have it set as Mario right now, but if we want to, we'll go into the assets class. And we'll change at Mario's name here to player. So he'll be the player. So now we can refer to in our player class, we can grab the player assets. And now we have all the assets for the player set in, into this dot assets for the player uh, class. Now um, I'm going to set this dot handler. Actually, we already have the handler will be set so that we can refer to it. Um, let's see. We will not be working with animations yet. So let's just get our tick and render going. Um, so underneath our underneath here. So I mean these other things are being handled uh, in the previous classes. The X and the Y will be handled in the base entity class and and then the, the movement and all that will be handled in the creature class. So we don't have to create functions to set values. We just need to create functions um, to to use those values. So we'll say uh, the first one we'll say is tick passing in delta time. Oops, and it does need to be a function. And we'll have our render passing in G for our brush. And now we'll also have a, another function and that will be called uh, get inputs. And I'll show you how we use that momentarily. All right, so in the get inputs, we're actually going to grab inputs uh, from our handler and and define what we want to do when certain keys are pressed. So one thing, let's get our tick going. In our tick for the character, we will actually, oh, and we do want to pass in delta time for our inputs as well, because what we'll be doing in the inputs uh, needs delta time. So in the tick for here, uh, for the player, we will just say this dot get input. Oh, and we'll call it get input. Get input. We'll run that passing in delta time, and we'll also run this dot move, which is obvious, uh, which is part of the creature class, and uh, now we can come into our get input, and we can say this dot x move equals zero. So we're going to set the amount that we want the character to move back to zero. Um, before we do any commands because um, what we're going to be changing we'll be changing that value uh, based on if keys are pressed so we can say if this dot handler dot get key manager remember we created that and we can say dot up so if the uh, the up key in this case the W key is pressed what do we want to do we want to change Y move equal to negative this dot speed because we want to go up and in the y direction is actually negative um, so we will take the speed of the player and then we'll also multiply it by delta time so that it will travel a consistent speed over time um, so this multiplier is how we're going to get him to move 
250 pixels per second versus trying to move him, you know, 10 pixels a frame or 10 pixels a tick. And this is just, you know, is just the way that we get that predictable movement. Um, so, and in the Y, uh, in the uh, move function, we call the Y move and the X move function or the move X and move Y, which then increments his X position by this value. So that's why we're setting this value here. And that, that tells it how much uh, to move it by in the creature class. So similarly, we can say this dot handler dot get key manager dot down, and this function will look, or this if will look uh, very similar. It will just say this dot y move is equal to this dot speed times dt. So this one will now move the character down, which y is positive. So uh, when going down so that will move it down copy these and we'll do left and right left right X and X so now it's moving the uh, character to the left and right whenever we call the get input function um, also now in the render we need to render just like we did uh, before so right now in our game state we're creating we're creating this my draw with the asset here so I'm gonna actually remove this from here and grab player and throw it in here now instead of putting asset Mario idle here we're just going to say this dot assets dot idle like so so that should grab us the idle from our asset um, in X and Y we will put this dot X and this dot y so now with these changes it should draw our character to the screen and whatever the the players x and y is um, you know and we we're setting those inside of here with our move functions so move then move x move move x move y and that's what's updating these this dot x and this dot y and when we create our player we're passing in an x and a y to start at so we'll start at a position and then when we press our keys down it will move us uh, to different positions so let's save this and make sure that we do like we are supposed to every time and return player now we shouldn't have anything going on right now when we refresh the screen nothing should be happening and that's because in our game state we haven't actually created a player we have nothing going on in the game state so we have to go back to our game state well and there's a few other things I mean the fact that we need to go to our app.js file and add all of these classes we just created so that we have access to them so we will create the entity class entity this will refer to that class which is an app slash classes slash entities slash entity the other one is the creature class so creature app slash classes slash entities slash creature slash uh, creatures slash creature with a capital C and then we have our player as well Oops. so that will be player and it's an app slash classes slash entities slash creatures slash player and we can make sure we had creatures yes plural alright so now we have access to all those classes we've created we can then now 
come into our game state and we will include in the game state we'll remove assets because we don't need that right now because we aren't actually going to directly have access now one thing too we have this tick going on with all this stuff we'll remove all of this stuff within the tick just like we did with the render all right now this is still going to be temporary code but for now we'll say player is equal to a new player all right and we're going to have to pass in some values and it look it's white we need to include player like so and I'll layer and we'll have access to player now it's not that and player is going to take uh, a handler so it looks like we can we will create the player inside of the uh, initialize function so we'll say this we'll say player um, and we can pull it out of here completely we can say this dot player is equal to a new player and it's going to take a handler which we have here an X which we can set at 20 and 20 so now that we have a player we can do some things like uh, this dot player dot tick pass in DT and this dot player dot render passing in G let's see what we have going on now if we have any errors we do have some errors in our player class and that looks like something simple it was on line 38 We don't need it. We don't need commas in our if statements. We don't even need these in our if statements. I'm just throwing stuff in. Okay. All right. Let's see what else. Let's see if we can get this bad boy working. Oh no, we don't have a width. in our player class on line 30 we don't have width oh right because we need to we need to uh, just say this dot assets for each one of these this dot assets Let's see if that takes care of it we might have more all right so we have character here and look at that it's moving he's moving 250 pixels per second uh, that's awesome I mean moving around a character is a huge step now now that this is done uh, I mean I, I feel like we're done that's a good game sweet awesome this is the end of the series no I'm just playing we'll have quite a bit more awesome stuff to do but um, we covered a lot today let me just go over first thing we did obviously was we took all of these uh, all of the prototype functions out of the outermost scope and we threw them into the object that we pass in to the extend function and and the reason for doing this is it's cleaner we can definitely tell what we're doing we're adding properties and in variables and stuff to our class and uh, you know it's easy to tell also we created a we created a entity class with all that you know was the base for all of our, our our player you know that has these values that we can get so later on we can get the X the Y the width the height um, we can set values and we created a creature class which had everything we need to get stuff moving um, and then we have a player which actually uses keyboard inputs to run the move functions passing in uh, or setting uh, the speed based on our um, default creature speed so 
we've got all this stuff going on and it doesn't look much different on the outside here we're still moving around a character just the same as before but we're doing it in a way that is much more reusable and easy to change depending on the character how fast different things like that we'll be able to change these things up um so that being said like in in a constructor here we could actually decide to say this dot speed equals uh you know let's say 50 and just because we've put it in the constructor of the player now when we run it the player should move much more slowly there we go so we can change properties and values uh, right here inside of the constructor of our classes but I will see you guys in the next video and we will start maybe making uh, this look a little bit more like a game uh, I will see you guys there